All right, hello everyone, and uh, welcome to my next video. Um, I apologize for no video last week. We went to AAU qualifiers, so I could go to AAU nationals. No, I'm not really trying to make AAU team. Uh, it's just in uh, a good spot for a tune-up tournament before I head out to SEA Games as my final tournament of my career. Uh, last tournament, like I said, or last week, we're a little bit busy. Um, I did get to watch a tournament, and I was gonna. I went over some stuff with our own personal team about ring management and working in the clinch and how important that is. And lo and behold, I was looking for um, some material to cover today. And not only does it show, is the match we're gonna watch between Russia and Korea going to show um, ring management and how well you should do it, but it also shows the reverse of what I was showing last week about how to win as a taller fighter against a smaller fighter. Um, because last week we had covered how to be how to win as a smaller fighter against a taller fighter. Uh, Russia does an excellent job um, using most of the stuff I harp on to talk about, and Korea does a great job managing in the ring, and both of them have uh, really good exchanges in the clinch that I'd like to go into. Um, any other notes? Oh, the other thing is that on Fridays, I usually post these on Fridays because I was like, oh, Friday, Friday sounds pretty cool. But my little sister had alerted me that a lot of people actually go out on Friday night and have dates or spend time with their family. And I forgot people did that because I normally just went to Friday night training. Um, so I'm probably going to start posting these either on Thursday or on Saturday, um, whichever one turns out to be a little bit more convenient to stay tuned for an update there. Uh, and besides that, um, let's get into this. Side note, uh, I know we've watched this Russian player before. Uh, this Korean player has been in a couple of Grand Prix already. Really good in the clinch, a really strong pushing game. When the pushing game first came out, everyone was watching this guy right here because he was the first one to really fully utilize it, uh, taking full advantage of the punch and uh, being able to shove your opponent back. Uh, that being said, um, there is a there are new rules that look like they're out already. It's uh, five rounds by superiority, though in this one, in this one Russia wins all the first three rounds, so technically considered superiority and still do the fourth round. So I'm not 100% sure on the rules now. I'm probably gonna have to um, read those. I'm gonna I'm gonna have to read those in the future uh, to make sure I can break that down for you guys and how that's working now. Because I myself now I'm not sure. I thought it was if it's five rounds, it's three rounds superiority. They go into the fourth round. Um, I'll have more information for you guys later. Anyway, let's go into this. They finished their um, finished testing already, and um, yeah, I might have to break some stuff down in slow motion for you guys. Now, as a smaller player, I went over this last time. Um, you do a lot of the front leg motion up just to cancel out the front leg of the taller fighter as your smaller fighter. Um, I think he's looking for the clinch right now. Russia, because everyone has tapes of everyone at this level, Russia knows that, able to land the punch right away. Not a bad really opening move from Korea, especially because as a smaller player, you're all in or you're all out. You can't you can't sit around and poke because poke range is for the taller fighter. Uh, th Sorry, I paused that exact moment for you guys twice. Russia tried to capitalize right away, which is a good idea. Um... For someone coming in, the way I like to punch also is the way Russia did it here. You wait till the leg is secure under your hand. Russia has his leg pretty secure when he comes up. Right there. The leg's pretty secure in his hand before he throws the punch out, so he knows that um, Korea can't flick it up to the head as he's coming in. So very good by Russia. Also great job trying to capitalize right there. Usually after a punch, most people are slightly relaxed because they accepted the punches check or they're checking the punch hit, and then Russia trying to capitalize. Not a bad idea. Also, something I like to see too is I try and harp on this like with our taller fighters. Um, if you're a taller fighter and you're going on the offense, or you're a taller fighter at all, period in your fight, a majority of your kicks should be to the head. Like, they need to be the head because the only way Korea or the smaller fighters are going to score is if they come in. So at some point, they have to put themselves in danger of getting rocked in the face. And if you're not doing that and it's you're changing body to body, that's not a good place for you to exchange. Like, you need to be trying to shoot threes against this guy or um, trying to take his head off so that way he actually has to respect what he's doing, what you're doing. Right away, too, um, I wish I could play this in slow motion. as Well, actually, I could, but... Notice the way uh, red is moving in and out. 
he doesn't want Russia to to be sure of where he is because they know so much good information. <laughs> Red's moving in and out to try and um, mess up Russia's distance, so it's not easy for Russia to try and score a head kick. Immediately, I talk about this so much, and I harp on this a lot with our kids, or at least I try to harp on it, is ring management. Red knows, the smaller player knows he needs the space to move. As soon as he's on the edge, a lot of people, especially, I even watch this at AEU, a lot of people will just sit here on the edge of the ring, and it just kills me, dude. Just like, they fell over, take the ring space. Red, Korea knows this, he walks right back to the middle, and now they're on even ground again. There's so much good information from here. A lot of it's kind of repetitive. Red's trying to bait that front leg again. Russia's looking primarily for a head kick. Able to close it. Now it's now we're in Red's or now we're in uh, the short guy's territory. Good. I'm gonna play this in slow, slightly slower motion for you guys. In the clinch too, I went over this last Friday with the team after watching AAU. A lot of people aren't really pushing, and a lot of people aren't defending themselves aren't displacing hands in the clinch. We'll go a little bit slower here. Nice try with the back kick. Red's closing the distance right away. He wants blue he knows blue's off balance. He wants to keep blue off balance to create opportunities where he can score and blue's not since he's so focused on trying to stay up, um, his defense is a little bit maybe like a little bit more lackluster and so he's trying to emphasize that point. Here, inside the clinch, you can see the red right here is pushing not on his chest or down here by the rib cage. He's pushing on the arms and the shoulders. I up on that a lot. Blue's arm is holding on for dear life wrapped around the back here. I'm not sure if that is legal now or not. Some refs call it, some refs don't. Um, so that's something you have to watch out for. Red's able to create space, tries to take advantage of it. Look, watching this situation right here, red had his hands on blue again. I'm trying to get uh, too far back. Right here. Red puts his hands on Blue. He's about to get ready for another shove. Blue knows he can't get shoved out because he's close to the edge now. Uses his hands to displace Red's hands right away. And he's able to, after that, he's able to wrap his hand around Red on the back side and uh, try and stay in, but uh, he got gum junk for holding. He's, uh, so this ref's maybe not going to let it slide. Um... But even in this small exchange, there's so much happening, and you have to be so mindful in the clinch that it's not just well, we're gonna. It's not like the old school sparring where when people clinch, they kind of just sat there because pushing wasn't allowed. Like that, that game is not. That's not available for you anymore. You need to be active in the clinch, both as a smaller guy or as a taller guy, and even on defense, you need to be actively defending yourself against things that Red's doing. It's like a very high level clinch game, which is. This kind of fell right into my lap, to be honest, considering what it, the material I covered last uh, Friday with the team. Good. Blue, once again, going straight to the face. He's not taking any any shots. If red were to come in at any point in this here, blue's looking for it. Blue's looking for it. He excited himself a little bit. If red were to come in right here, which is what some taller people do, and it kills me, dude. It kills me when you're a tall guy and you're just trying to hit the dude in the body. Like... I cannot emphasize enough how often you need to be throwing things in this guy's face. Like, you need to make him scared of your front leg. And you need, that guy you're fighting who's smaller needs to know that if they screw up, they're eating a foot. You need to have that fear in their face 24-7. And he still lands it. And uh, really good of blue. Red's not doing good. He, Red's so focused on the offense here, unfortunately. He's not respecting blue uh the russian players out in so right here this is actually really good of russia he got his arm on top why does that matter that it's on top is because if russia's arms on top here and he's going out in you can't you, you the, the traditional out like block this way is now um there's now an obstacle in your way of getting your arm up because blue's arm is on top of yours so your chance to defend yourself against the out in is not as high what i normally do when i try and do is i try and block like this so that way the foot never makes contact um but as i was saying so besides um red's lack uh failure to see or respect blue's left out in here which blue has thrown multiple times already um i think red's too focused on his offense and because of that he's not getting situated he's not displacing blue's balance first before trying to score and that's why he's getting scored on so often 
Uh, I think this is gets re they they challenge it because they count it as two head points instead of just one. Oh, maybe they don't challenge it. I thought they challenged this one. Maybe not. Oh, they straight left it. Oh, okay. Yeah, they did not challenge that at all. Interesting. Okay. Other side point that I need to make here. I'm emphasizing this really a lot because I see this. I saw this at AU qualifier, and I just people need to start capitalizing on this. It's so important. So here, boom. Maybe scored. Maybe didn't. Watch what red does. Red shoves him all to the all to the edge of the ring, goes for the point, and then tries to shove him out, and does shove him out. That's a three point swing. Like even if blue hit you. Even if you got hit, doing that kind of play, two to the body, one for the out, that's three for three, right? And so as a smaller player in the clinch, you need to maximize everything that's happening. If they they, if they risk and or if they um, expose themselves and kick, you need to maximize and take advantage of that. Because if you're standing in place and they do that, then, dude, they're have, they have opportunity scores and you're just giving up opportunity to score like there's so many things for you could, that you could be doing so once again like blue does out in he gets his leg stuck here even if he didn't get his leg stuck here um they're going to be off balance so shoving them out toward the edge right there boom and hitting still a valid play most likely still going to work that's a three-point swing in your favor anyway that's the gum junk so so blue didn't even score so three for three uh, video, oh, this is the video replay. That was interesting. Bup, ba -da -ba. Oh, we're back. We've been watching this guy a lot. I don't know if you guys noticed. We've been watching this dude a lot. Oh, the camera guy was not on top of it. it started and they didn't even... Yeah, that was interesting. <laughs> oh, no, this is the replay. Yeah, that's the replay they're watching. We're watching the replay of the replay. Discussions, discussions. Nice little break for everyone. Discussion. Well, was it denied? Which I think it's denied, right? Yeah, so it stays. So like I said, even if they got the three points, it was ten to three, ten to six because red maximized blue kicking like he How do I put this? Blue risked a little bit by trying to go for the headshot. Red capitalized on a, on the risk that Blue took, shoved him to the edge, got his two points, shoved him out, three points now. Even if he did hit the headshot, the difference in score doesn't matter. But even now that Blue hasn't scored, he's catching up on points. Good. Also notice the arm positioning isn't on the Hogu. It's near the edges. It's near the shoulders. It's near the under the under the armpits. It's not near. It's not like on the chest. Watch where they're pushing each other. Red's keeping the aggression on. Ooh, good job. And a lot of the stuff is our points I was making before. Like when Red slides in, it's not just a straight slide in. He has that small mini hop. Right there, uh, he has a lead leg to block the first lead leg. Now he's set. His arms are pushed near the top of the chest, not here in the rib cage. I know his other arm, you can't see it, but I'm sure his other arm is under the, or is like near the armpit right here. Immediately, as soon as they get back in, red nose, blue, it does not have much ring space. Immediately crowding him. Try and go for the headshot. Nice try. Red really needs to do a better job of like making sure he's, <laughs> that's not there. And um, I know this is, Oh, yeah, so, oh, okay, so score's back. I got confused. I was like, wait, he gave it to blue, but red walked off this way. Um, yeah, so what I, the recap of that, guys, same thing. You need to be active in the clinch, both either taking your opponent's arms off, making sure your hand placement's right. If they kick, you need to be pushing forward, so that way you can maximize if they're trying to kick you. Um, and also, you need to be aware of their weapons. I mean, look, Russia's thrown that left leg out in a bajillion times. Um, I think Korea, because he knows he has to get the points inside, isn't really as mindful about it. And then um, lastly, if you're a taller player, you need to be threatening to their face. Like, 
you can't be just chilling there and trying to exchange body shots because they're going to close in on that. It's easy to shut that down, and then you're just going to get run over in the clinch. Russia's doing a great job using both the uh, you, both his headshots, and he's throwing in some back kicks that's turning his sides in there to prevent uh, Korea from just straight rushing in. We're going to watch a couple more rounds of this. Um, it's, it's the same theme over and over again on both sides. And, uh, I mean, there's, there's like four rounds of pretty much that. And then like five minutes of celebration at the end. Oh, oh, I'm too fast, too fast. I like Red's footwork right here. Because Red, he has to, Red's job is to try and get Russia to hesitate. As soon as he hesitates, that's when, Ru that's when Korea can close in and, uh, take advantage because, like you have to lift your leg and then reload it back down, or you're not like you're not sure when to throw it, and that um, being unsure and creating that small amount of hesitation is sometimes all you need as a smaller fighter to create or to to close in the gap. Good same thing. Red going in with that lead leg to to challenge just in case uh, blue comes up. I may not have punched there. Russia did a great job managing. Manage that. Good punch, though. I'm not sure why he positioned like that. Maybe not expecting it. And right away, what I was saying, I keep, I keep harping on red because um, I'm generally a smaller fighter, so I, I I pay attention more to the smaller fighter. But what Blue's doing a great job of is as soon as he started here, boom, restarts. As soon as the round starts, immediate try for the head again. Good. You can watch also, I'm going to rewind it a little bit. They're vying for hand position in the clinch. It's not just single. And then what Russia does also, which is great if you're a taller fighter against a smaller fighter. I, was, I saw this first against uh, a Korean what is fighting Temujin in the 2018 Korea Open. And um, I thought Temujin was probably going to win the division because he's a good fighter. He's super strong. I didn't see any other person stand up to him. And uh, Temujin rushed this Korean guy, and the Korean back kicked him super hard. And I was like, oh, that's like four points. And it was like a straight shot. And then the second time, he got hit with the back kick. You could see a lot of steam kind of go out of Temujin. And I was like, oh, so if someone's rushing you, that's the answer. Um, so there's always be willing to learn. I learned a lot from that Korean just watching that. And I was like, well, that's the answer, dude. If someone rushes you a lot, you just back kick. And... Um, one of those, you only need one or two of those connect before, dude, they don't want to rush you anymore. So Russia knows that um, Korea as a small fighter has to rush him. And so not only is he mixing um, head kicks into the arsenal, he's using a lot of back kick. And then also, too, at the edge, he's not complacent. He knows that um, he's on the edge. It's going to be dangerous because he is probably going to lose the pushing fight. Like more often than not, he's going to lose the pushing fight. So he recovers well right into the clinch and then also starts pushing back in to make sure he has ring space. He centers himself. Good. And then lastly, two, last little replay here. Um, watch their hands in this and like notice how they're vying for inside hand position. Here, Russia spends a lot of time trying to remove, um, trying to remove Korea's hands. And uh, that's something I went over also with our team to to take away their ability to push you. Like if if their hand isn't on you properly, they can't push you. What I was what I was gonna say from Russia here um, was I think here even a cut fit flip kick or um, going straight to the head like twice would probably be good, especially because he doesn't have much ring space too much ring space over here and. Um, yeah, but he, he ends up going to the body. Ooh, nice. I think Russia in general just didn't see this one coming. As a taller fighter, even though you can throw your out-ins in the clinch, uh, which is a lot of it's what been scoring, I, I personally can't. I'm not too good at throwing out into the clinch, so I don't coach it as much because I'm not an expert in that area. If you have an out in the clinch and you're taller, you can throw that. I'd especially uh, like to recommend that you vie for position, not really on the inside or outside, but on top of your opponents. 
or and if you're holding them hold a little bit onto this instead of holding here you want to be shoving more on here and so when you out in it'll be a little bit more difficult for them to get their hand up properly uh this one uh, this out in from korea is very nice it came from blind side there's really korea's facing the complete other direction like rush is not even looking arguing holding Just drive with the headshots. Mm, I don't know about the punches anymore. Also, a side caveat here. I know um, the Korean guy used to like to punch a lot, but I think, granted, given how specifically for this Russian player and how good his left front leg is, I don't think the Koreans wanted to risk running that left leg to the head against the left hand punch which is why um he doesn't use it as often here because L russia's left leg is really good for flicking and all that like specific to this russian player here a lot of times you if a player is using a lot of front leg you can go on top you can handle the leg and you can punch over it i think specifically for this fighter it's a no-go good same thing so he um, you can see kind of here, Russia recovers fast, and I think he stops because there's a gumjang, or uh, because the ref Kalios, but as soon as Russia goes for it, Korea steps his feet in to, uh, what's it called, make Russia a little bit off balance. Boom, steps in, steps in, shoves Russia back. Russia recovers with a deeper stance, and there's a Kalios, so. So same thing. It's it's a Russia's still throwing to the head, still has the back kick in uh in the arsenal, and then the left leg out into the clinch. Korea overall is trying to get around that, and uh, Russia's cover inside has just been good against. It has been um. How do I put this? Russia in the clinch has been better about finding openings for his out in than Red has been about displacing Blue's body first and then trying to hit after, or uh, trying to create openings. Uh, that happens sometimes with. I'm not sure if it actually hit or didn't hit. Let's check that out. Oh no! It's, okay, so it's for, I thought for a second it didn't hit. It looked like it hit. Let's go. Let's go a little bit slower. Okay, I feel like the toe got it. Got himself on there a little bit. Um, sometimes there are phantom points that happen with the electronic because it has to do with magnets, so as long as it's in the magnetic range. Good. Russia again, going straight for the head. Both, both, both kicks are for the head. Oh, they gave Russia the point for that. Wow. Again, straight for the head. This is what, if you're a taller fighter, you need to do this. You need to go straight for their head, either short head kicks or like mid-range head kicks. You don't want to be too extended on your on, on going long-range head kicks. So you're looking specifically for short-range head kicks. Mm. Uh, a smaller fighter here, she's trying to do a good job shoving Russia out. Russia has recovering. Longer stance. I think in, I think Red's getting tired just in general. Oh, Gumjang. Oh, this is also interesting, and some people may have missed this. Red, like, right here, boom. He's on the edge. Blue's standing in the middle. If he doesn't move right now, they're going to start with Red here. Red knows that, walks straight back to the middle to make sure they're starting on even ground. Dude, ring management is so important. Like, ring management. I know how else to emphasize it. Wow. Blue at the back is super good. And Russia's just, in general, this guy's been, like, world champion already. This guy is the best. Red does a great job recovering here. Wow. What a what a crazy exchange. Here, back kick. Boom, set. 
usually after a back kick, um, not many people follow up. Russia knows this. He goes straight in for the out-in. Korea knows he's already given up four. And he just got hit, so that's another three. So he's down by seven. If he doesn't make something happen, um, dude, that's a huge deficit. Smart enough to know that. He gets, even though he operates under pressure, I like that. Boom. Gets, he tries to, if they didn't Kalyo that, that would have been two headshots. And a gum jump. One, two, and the gum jump. That would have been seven points back in his favor also. Um, I know we're supposed to be covering taller player versus short player. Russia is doing the same thing over and over again. Left leg out in the clinch, headshots, back kicks. Red is doing what he can around that. Um, and it's creating good opportunities for himself. Based off things like just managing in the ring, one, ring management, and second, clinch management has been amazing this game. Good. So smart play by Russia here. If they don't engage, I mean, it's quite a big possibility Red could have clinched off this. I think uh, Russia's cut should have been higher. Yeah. Um, I don't know. Maybe he had a cock just in case Red did slide in on it for the face. But notice how Red slides back, and that's when you're uh, Russia. Like, that's, that's not really what you're looking for. You don't want to attack deep to the head because that's easy to close in on. You want short head kicks or mid-range head kicks and if they're far range then whatever you got some ring space nice try russia trying with head kicks again i think um red is tiring out just in general i mean that the kind of push game sometimes you have to play is hard Oh, right there. Ah, oh, don't look. Just go. Russia's doing a great job. Uh, also managing in the clinch. Boom. He doesn't have his arms around the... Uh, trying to shove on the inside. And to be honest, I'm not really sure why. They may just both be tired already. Good try. Russia's up two rounds. I think we'll just we'll just do one more round. I think Russia takes this whole thing anyway after that round. Okay. Oh. All right. Last round, guys. Last round. Almost there. Also, another. I'm. Is he gonna get called for ground for that? As a taller fighter, this is one of the defenses. Um, you can also do here if. Oh, assuming your rough is okay with it i mean this is a kind of a gray area some refs let this go through some refs don't um if they don't let this slide i call this like i i have in my head i've dubbed this locking up uh we'll see russia do it here boom they get inside once it's fully closed like that watch where russia puts his hands they're behind and up they're behind and up so they're kind of like locking your opponent right in front of you it's hard as another person. You have to like get around their uh, their arms as you're, if you're trying to create space. So one of your things you can do as a taller fighter is do that. So he's trying to lock it up. Red Red knows. Blue's trying to lock it up again. Red knows. So he's trying as much as he can to make sure that you can't get the elbow behind his arm. Once your elbow's behind their arms, they can't do anything anymore. So Red's doing what he can to make sure that doesn't happen. Oh, that's what I'm saying, dude. The mid-range, short-range head kicks. Red's, or, uh, yeah. Russia's left out in is on, on top of it. Oh my gosh, what a monster. I think Red's tired. You can see kind of by the way he's walking around. He's not... Uh, doesn't look like he has that much stamina left. And uh, Blue, I 
I also feel like Russia kind of knows this, and so he's bringing the fight to Korea now because he doesn't want Korea to ever regain his stamina. If your opponent is tired and you go on the offense, even if it's like faking and light cuts, but you're like poking them out, that mentally is draining for your opponent because they have to deal with a threat coming at them while they're trying to like catch their uh, catch their breath. Um, and so even if you're tired, sometimes if, if you can be safe about it, like long cuts or um, really uh, try and do it, like kind of doing the way Russia is pressuring him right now. Right now, is he forcing, he's forcing Red to engage. So Red never, Korea never really has a chance to catch his breath. Like long cut, like that. It's all the small stuff that kind of just keep chipping away at your opponent's stamina. And the more tired your opponent is, the less they're going to think, the less dangerous they are. Yeah, I think Red is too tired to do what he needs to do to win this fight now. Um, and so... Oh, nice. There you go. Yeah. <laughs> they are both exhausted. Um, so, I don't think we're going to... We're, we're not going to break down anymore besides that. Um, I have another video to do, actually. Um, someone I met on YouTube was kind enough to actually send me their fight. We're, I'm going to break her, her fight down next uh, on a different video. But so overall recap from this fight, uh, starting from last week as a smaller fighter, you need to be managing that ring. You need to take it every advantage of your opponent uh, messing up when they kick in a clinch to put them on the edge. You need to displace their body and kick. Uh, you need to be active, actively defending yourself in the clinch. And you need to manage. You need to be fighting for the ring space as often as possible because you need that to play around with and um someone had posted a comment about what if your opponent likes to move back a lot um when you attack like how do you close the distance then do you need to take the ring space from him first and then force him on the edge and then when he's on the edge then you can close in and work your work work on the inside um creating opens and all that uh i, I covered that in my last video with tamu jin as a taller fighter what i really wanted to come across here was one you need to be threatening to your the smaller guy's head like mid close range and mid range head kicks are super important if you can out in on a clinch sure like do it if your your inside game is better than theirs please do it you can um out in outside you can inside out i have a teammate who, who likes to do inside out crescent kicks um and you want to be exchanging that way if you can in clinch if not then you need to be actively displacing their arms to make sure you don't get shoved back you can lock it up um, and was there anything else I covered off of that? For clinch, clinch wise for taller people, you need to actively be defending yourself in a clinch. Like that's paramount. Um, uh, because imagine if Russia wasn't doing that, then like Korea would be walking all over him. Um, so you can lock up, displace the hands very actively, keep displacing the hands, uh, and cover at the same time. And then thirdly, if uh, your opponent likes to rush you a lot as a tall player, back kick is always a good option to score a lot of points because they're running straight in. I mean, it's hard to run. It's hard to... If you take two people and someone's running, like, sprinting and the other person's sidestepping, obviously the person who's sprinting is going to win. So their body's going to be square most of the time when they're trying to rush. Um, doing a back kick, great counter. So taller players, short to mid-range head kicks, a lot of them, keep them... Keep threatening them that way. Defend yourself in the clinch. Displace hands. Lock it up. Um, make sure your head. Be wary of where their feet are and uh, like block, obviously. And then thirdly, uh, keep the back kick in the arsenal. Um, and uh, I think that'll be it. I think probably next week I'm gonna be looking more at some other fights. Preferably, I love watching Dehoon, so whenever I I see that one on on this guy's channel, I'm gonna put that out there. Um, and so far, that's it, guys. Thanks for watching, and I'll have a video out next week. See you guys next time.